And the bronze medal match tonight is going to be Romania versus Ukraine. Then we'll go on to the bronze medal match for men's team foil, followed by the two gold medal matches for the men and women in team foil. So we've got four big matches coming up with some great fencers, a lot of foil, all the foil action you could want. And I'm here joined by Mr. Peter Bouchard. Welcome, Peter. Thank you very much, Serge. Peter is a foil expert. He's a fencing master. He's president of USA Fencing. Uh, he coaches out of a club in uh, San Francisco, California, former president of the USA Coaches Commission and Coaches Association, and uh, someone who's going to give us a lot of technical insight to what we're seeing on the strip tonight. And uh, welcome, Peter. Thank you very much, Serge. Here we see uh, Ukraine on your right and Romania on the left. Uh, Romania, Ms. Kordobu makes an attack parried by Ms. Budenko of the Ukraine, and the riposte is valid, one nothing. So we're going to be going to 45 points. Uh, we have uh, uh, up to 45 points. We've got nine rounds, three fencers on each side with an alternate in addition to that, but we've got essentially three fencers, so three fencers on each side, fence three fencers, uh, three fencers on one side, fence three fencers on the other side, and it's a round robin, so three times three is nine, that's nine matches, uh, five points, up to five points each, unless they time out. So at the end, if you hit 45 points first, you win, or if you um, are at the, uh, if, if you're in the lead at the end of those nine periods, then you win. It was a pretty disengaged attack by uh, the Corbu of Romania to tie it up. They're just sort of feeling each other out right now. Uh, the attack from the left um, hits off target. That means there's no touch scored, but it stops the action. I think they're fencing super close together. I'm very surprised. And counter parry repost is off target from the right. And then the last, when the colored light came on, it, it did not have the right of way or was not, did not have priority, was not initiated correctly. And here we have a remise kind of wiggled and, and, and uh, turned out of the way. So Ukraine able to score. A lot of blade exchanges here. Something we haven't really seen a lot of. Uh, Mostly it's been absence of blade. And Corbu push, push, push. And Budenko does an attack in preparation and scores. Ukraine leads 3-1. And if you're not familiar with fencing, if you're new to it, a lot of you out there know fencing. And, uh, and uh, we always try to give a little bit of an introduction to fencing just in case you're new to it or don't understand something about it. Um, uh, and essentially, we have three weapons in fencing, epee, foil, and saber. Um, we did three days of saber here in junior. Now okay. we're doing foil. Now we're doing foil. And the objective here is for each fencer to hit the other fencer with the point of their blade on the gray vest that they're wearing. So if they hit on the legs, the arms, the head, it's off target. It doesn't count. It does stop the action. And we get a white light with it. But we're trying to hit the torso. And uh, you'll see a red and a green light go off when you hit the torso, one for each side. It doesn't mean anything different than that. And uh, if both lights go off at the same time, then we have a situation where the referee has to make a subjective call as to who got the touch. In um, this case, the attack was, uh, it was only one light, so it was obvious that Romania got that touch. Yeah, so if it's a single light, it's clear. The person on that side got that point. It means that the Romanian girl hit the other girl and got the point. If they both go off, though, then we have to talk about what is what's called right of way. And it means essentially that a person initiates an action. Um, so here we found that uh, the attack was parried by Dinka. Then Dinka made the reposter, the return thrust, and Poluciuk, uh, Poluciuk did the counter parry repos and scored, putting Ukraine ahead five to three. As the next segment comes up, um, and as Serge mentioned, each fencer fences each fencer from the other team once for five touches over a, a period of three minutes. And you know, as we were talking about earlier in the um, uh, in the semifinals, you know, 
the whole idea behind team is a little bit of a different mental strategy than individual fencing. So um, because you've got a lineup of people on each side with different strengths, fencing another group of people with different strengths. So you're always playing the game of, OK, you know, where are we? Are we ahead? Are we behind? How strong is our fencer versus the fencer they're coming up against? Sometimes you'll want your fencer to hold the line. Sometimes you'll want them to go strong. And uh, so there's a lot of active coaching that goes on in that gets involved in team where a coach becomes a real strategist. That's right. And here we have a difference in size. We have the uh, Ms. Lodziuk uh, so much taller than Ms. Dinka trying to hold off and uh, and Ms. Dinka trying to get inside and get, get close enough to hit. Um, there was a controversial call. That is to say, I mean, not controversial in the referee's mind, but um, each fencer is allowed a, uh, a video replay um, every segment. Uh, if their their challenge is upheld, they, they get to retain that replay. Um, and now we're waiting for the referees. There are two uh, referees in each match, one at the video machine and one as uh, stands in front of the strip and called the strip ref. Um, our two uh, referees, uh, Andre Kovrinik and Rail Nagimov. And we'll try to give you a little bit of background on some of these fencers. So this time the, the, the challenge was upheld and the, the touch was awarded to the Ukraine. So the Ukraine retains that, uh, that um, challenge. Uh, here we had um, the Romanian like attack into the movement of, uh, excuse me, the yeah the Romanian attack into Polotiuk, and her foot got underneath the other one, so uh, unfortunately she suffered a little bit of an injury and uh, doesn't look too bad. But I think maybe we need a little attention. And she called for uh, some kind of medical attention. I think they might be bringing out the magic spray. Ah, the magic spray. It's, it's oh here we go. Yeah, this looks like the uh, Romanian medical person with. Uh, uh, that's that's actually the uh, one of the members of the FIE Medical Commission. The, she's a French doctor. Wow, look at that. I say you get extra good care out here at uh, the Junior Cadet World Championships. There's, There's the, the magic, magic spray. spray. You found, you called it. It, it makes it's, everything it's, go it's, away. It's not a hard call. <laughs> it's, it's pretty predictable. <laughs> right. oh, look, she's miraculously fine. Miss uh, Dinka, Andrea Dinka, uh, came in 48th the other day in the junior uh, individual competition. Um, and... Uh, Polutiuk uh, in the last one uh, uh, took the initiative by, by contacting the blade of Dinka and attacked, even though Dinka was moving forward and Pol scored. Polutiuk was 11th the other night. So she, she's pretty good. I, I, I watched her uh, in the last match. I'm very impressed. She's pushing her down, pushing her down. You're going to use your height here. She's hiding the blade, holding it back, and boom! We got long line. She is tall. She target. looks like an epi fencer. No, no. Maybe she should switch over. <laughs> yep, so one more time, uh, Polutiuk uh, was able to grab the blade and take the priority from Dinka and uh, score. And then this last one, I think it comes, uh, starts sort of preparing, as we say, preparing to hit. Uh, Plotiuk uh, takes the initiative and makes the attack and scores. So 9-3 Ukraine. They want this bronze medal. Plotiuk keeping perfect distance and daring her to come and then over the top hit off target. And you know, of course, foil is interesting because foil is the traditional training weapon. I mean, it used to be that everyone, I did this and you probably did, Peter, everyone starts in foil, yep. right? Yep. And then yeah. goes, sometimes migrates to other weapons, sometimes stays in foil, right? So, um, but today it's changed a little bit. Sometimes we'll start kids in Sabre or Epe, but, but you know, for many, many, many years, that was the tradition. You start in foil. And Polutsiuk uh, makes that final touch to make it 10, but her blade came out a little the worse for wear. I call it the golf club effect. Uh, the thing is bent at a 90 degree angle and looks like the, the days are numbered for that blade. 
Going to the third round here, going to nine total. If you look at the scoreboard there, you'll see right above the time, three slash nine. That means we're in the third of nine rounds. Olga Sopat of Ukraine came in sixth the other night in individual competition. Yeah. Strong fencer. Karina Vasile uh, for the uh, Romanian team. Yeah. And look at the difference in styles here. The Romanian uh, team uh, has a, a very uh, thin and lithe fencer, uh, holding it off in real traditional form. Vasile was 26 the other night. So all these girls, you know, they've had a day of rest. Uh, from the junior individual competition the other night. So they've, they've had a day yesterday to take it easy. And the way the pandemic is, the pandemic protocol is right now, normally you would have, with, with, on the non-pandemic uh, times, what would happen is the uh, juniors would stay and hang out and watch their cadet teammates and counterparts fence and cheer them on. Um, here, the rule is once you've been eliminated, you leave. So in the uh, earlier in the elimination rounds, if you got eliminated, you had to go back to your hotel. And the girl, if you're not fencing, you cannot be here. So uh, you know it's a different type of situation. Um, we don't have a, a live audience here, even of um, teammates and uh, you know kids coming who are traveling with you who are fencing other events or other weapons. So that's a completely different mentality. To, to fence with. Yeah, so that's, I think that's the COVID protocol you're talking about. Here we just right. saw a, a Sopit miss her attack and got hit on a counterattack by, by Vasily. Um, but despite that, uh, Ukraine is up uh, by six. We were talking about the other night about maybe having a soundtrack of applause like they have for the and cheering, like they have for the uh, NFL, for, for U.S. football when oh, sure. in the stands. What do you think? Should we... What do you think, how do you think that would be if we had live cheering or a sort of recorded cheering played live in the in the stadium? I think it's a great idea. I don't see it or hear it. I wonder what they're going to do for the Olympic Games. I think we'll have some spectators. Give a good There'll be Japanese spectators. Only though. Japanese from my understanding. And here we have an, uh, an attack from the left into preparation hit off targets on no score. Even though there was a colored light from the right, it doesn't count because it didn't have priority or what we call right of way. Vasile pushing, pushing to parry the end of the attack by uh, Sopit. And Sopit pushing, pushing for the Ukraine. Pushing, pushing, pushing. Trying to provoke something. Pushing. And attack is off target. No good. Still 12-5. Remember these segments go three minutes or five touches. And the clock is ticking down. They look uh, content to leave it like this. It looks like Sopa doesn't have confidence that she can bring it back. Um, she just want to try to stay away and keep the deficit at six, or I'm sorry, seven. Attack off target. Um, which is probably okay, judging by the body language there uh, for Sopit. Happy with the seven touch deficit. Not deficit, but the lead. Seven touch lead. Yeah, push, push, push. She's trying to provoke something, so she might get a touch, but if she doesn't, it's fine. They're letting the clock run. And attack misses, so see. It didn't, it, she thought she had a good chance, but she missed and uh, the counterattack by Vasile uh, scored. So now it's down to six touches. And as Vasile advances, Sofit captures the blade and goes. 13-6, attack in preparation. And as we were talking about earlier, only one bronze medal goes out to team matches. Remove off target, hit the arm there. In uh, individual, we give out two bronze medals. In team, we give out one. So that's why these girls are fencing, to fence for the bronze medal. Yeah, the, the loser goes home empty-handed. 
after all that work and all that great fencing. Well, they get a ranking out of it. They get a. That's true. That's true for sure. For sure. So to, to make it to the fourth place is it's pretty darn not good. a medal, but it's you get points that will help position you for future competition. Agreed. Agreed. World ranking. You're right about that. Now here we had a situation where um, the Ukraine ran the clock so much that we never even got to 15. So our next segment goes to 20. So and that's quite common in foil. I mean, you don't see that at all foil. in Sabre. Especially in women's foil. Especially in women's foil. Yes. Well, that's why they give women's foil, I think, an extra 10 or 15 minutes of time for the entire match when they schedule everything, because it takes the longest of any of the events. When you count the off-targets and the video calls and just the everything, you know. The in fact, last night in cadet foil, I don't know if you watched it, but we had two, in one bout, we had two passivity calls, which is unusual. It is foil. unusual. Um, I think women's foil, you'll see that uh, more. But the passivity means that for uh, an entire minute, no one uh, put the light on. No one scores even off target. And, that's, and they uh, did it twice in one bout, these girls. Oh, my goodness. And so what we happened? Were, yeah, we were already in the second period, and the score was like 2-1 or 1-1. And so you get a uh, the result of that is whoever is behind is awarded uh, not awarded, what uh, penalized by what's called a yellow card or a warning. If that happens again, which it sounds like it did, it did. The person that behind gets a red card, and they both did. So if it was tied, then they both get a red card. That's what happened. That's <laughs> okay. what happened. Okay. <laughs> they just didn't want to fence each other. So I like to joke that uh, our sport is the only one where y you have to sanction them to participate. <laughs> That is kind of true. And here we have uh, uh, an electronic failure by the body cord, which is under, underneath the clothing, and it makes the electronic uh, scoring uh, work. So we're changing it real fast. On Miss Bedenko. Yeah. So we've we've had a, a change of uh, a change of fencers. Uh, We've seen Ms. Dinka on the, on the left before, and we've seen Ms. Budenko, who was the leadoff for the Ukraine, on the right before. She was 10th in the juniors the other night, Ms. Budenko. It was supposed to be fast, but now she's lost her plug, like way up her sleeve. Yeah, I hate when that happens. So best laid plans of mice and men. And the referee has to assist getting that plug out there. The, the, I think the d job description of the referee just changed. Looks like the thing just disintegrated inside the uniform. Okay, anyway, we'll, we'll get back to the action real fast. Meanwhile, what's happening on the other s strips? At the same time, we have... Um, we have uh, the placement matches. Placement matches, exactly, for fifth and seventh. Okay, here, we're ready to go. And we have a yellow card, which means that for equipment failure, at least twice. So there's a yellow card for um, Denko. Should there be another violation like that, a red card will result in a point for the opponent. And Ms. Budenko chases her down with the blade and hits. Attack is good. 14-6. Remember, going for 20 here. This is the fourth segment. Remy's off target. And the blade needs to get straightened. As you can see. Yeah, the, the uh, Ukrainian team... Um, the three girls, Sopit, Budenko, and Petrova, all were in the top 16. So actually, Petrova was 12th. That was the that was the lowest. So uh, uh, they, they all did quite well uh, in junior. So that, they've taken Petrova out and put her in the uh, in the substitute spot, um, and they're fencing uh, uh, Budenko. I don't think she was in, in our match before. The trove is not listed. Very repose. 
And the attack is short and the attack is good. We call that repose by distance, as it were. So you get out of the way and make them fall short and then you get to go. By the way, that's not a that's not a technical term, it's not a proper term. It's just kind of in the vernacular, if you will. So it's really just attack short, attack good. And the periroopos, uh, the body cord like fell out of the weapon, so that's why the light went off. There was no actual touching of the target there. The miracles of technology. So fencing was electrified uh, the foil. The first Olympics uh, were uh, 1956, and the first Electro Epe was 1936. And the Sabre, not till uh, very, very late uh, in the 20th century. But now everything's electric, and it's much more, it's, it's made things much fairer, it's not so political. And it's a great, great thing for fencing is the development of it. Here we saw Perry repost by Budenko uh, putting the score to 17. Remember, we're going all the way to 20. So Dinka can bring the, the score up, but it doesn't look like it's a tough task against the Budenko here. She hit uh, on the leg here off target. Pronouncing these two names is quite similar. <laughs> They're pretty close. That's right. Especially we're talking with masks on. Yep, COVID protocol, and the attack misses, and Dinka jumps inside and is able to uh, score. Chasing her down, but parry to repose off target. No touch for all that work. Down to 104 in this segment. Will they reach 20? Attack is off target. The, the colored light was not, did not have priority or the right of way. And you know, in reality, it's not a big uh, priority for them if they reach 20. It's not like they have to. It's, That's right. You know, they just care that they're ahead. And they are by 10 points. They're in really good shape. By the way, just to uh, just to explain, the yellow card will go away when the when the fencers change. It only lasts for this segment. Is there any situation where you can get a card for the whole team? Um, it's usually uh, no, actually stump the coach time. Yeah, yeah exactly. Can't <laughs> remember exactly, which is embarrassing. Um, I remember there used to be a. a a way to do it. What, um, what about the coach? Can the coach get a yes, penalty card? That is the way to do it. And also, like, if the captain, like, runs out and, and screams and yells or something like that. And Not is, that that would ever happen oh, in fence. Are you kidding? <laughs> um, but the, that, that can happen. And then the whole te the team gets it, it. It lasts the whole match for everybody. I see. Yeah, yeah. And so that means that any if they get a yellow card, because then any time one of the fencers gets another yellow card, then it's a red card? Yep. So Perry repost, good. Um, so this is different than individual. The, the, the individual fencer is not penalized for the, for the uh, coach's antics, but, but um, just the coaches. And they can be uh, sent home from the venue um, if they, if they I've seen become that. too unruly. Yeah. But, um, or at least sent out of the venue, which usually they stand at the door and stare in. That's what they used to do. <laughs> too. But uh, anyway, the captain of the team or the coach of the team or something is part of the team. So therefore, the team will suffer if these antics happen. And the close quarters, what we call infighting. Here we see Dinka scoring to, or not scoring, but hitting the legs on Nota, and we're getting down below 10 seconds. So we're not going to reach 20, and it's done. That's it. Nine touches. On That's to nine the fifth touches. round. So we have Amelia Corbu of Romania against Olga Sopit. We already talked about Miss Sopit, and um, Miss Corbu. Ms. Corbu came in 43rd the other night, in uh, the other day in junior 
women's individual foil. I just, I, I think the Romanians are tough. Like, they're not showing that they're so as, as the uh, Ukrainians, but I, I just have been very impressed throughout the, the tournament uh, of the Romanian contingent, honestly. They, for a small country, they're really tough. Well, yeah, they, you know, the Romanians, the Romanians have produced some incredible epists. As a Perry repos good for the Romanian. Uh, yeah, well, like all Ana the Maria weapons. Popescu. That's true. Yeah, more recently, so 1968 Olympic champion Jan Drimba from Romania in Mexico City, and uh, there was a great saber finisher named uh, Pop. Uh, so the, yeah, they've had all three of them. They're, they're just a, Ian one Pop. Of the, yeah, one, one of the. Ian great. Pop. I worked with him for years in the FIE. There you go. Well. The Romanians have had uh, great chances all the way along, and he, this is no exception right here. The juniors coming up, they're going to take over for the uh, established fencers. I remember there was Badea, a great foil, women's foil fencer, uh, world champion. Uh-oh. Uh, so the, the call was made for Corbu, but uh, Sopit is not happy with that as for uh, video review. You can see it right here on the slow motion. And the attack is coming. And uh, uh, the argument for Sopit will be that the attack never really started. Um, but the referee disagrees and uh, gave it to, uh, uh, you know, upheld his original call. So if it's putting the blade like out of reach or hiding the blade as we say or was getting close enough to, to get the blade every time she beats the blade she is sort of reiterates her right of way and you can see the amazing uh, athletic ability there with the so, with so Peter so we, we you're seeing a lot of situations here where fencers are getting backed into the um, two meters warning zone. area yep, right yep, yep. So explain to our audience how that works. Sure. So um, at the end of either end of the fencing piece or strip, uh, there is a section of t a, a section of two meters long and two meters. So it's a square basically, and it must be um, by rule uh, uh, a different color or somehow marked so that people can see it out of the corner of their eye. They're in there, and if they go off the end past that zone with both feet, it's a point for the other one. Um, so when they get down there, they don't want to go back anymore. So they do all kinds of crazy things like uh, to to uh, alleviate that. So we saw before where Sopit leaned back on her back knee and kind of removed her target, but then kept her front leg extended so she stayed on the strip. So if you go off the side of the strip normally and you step off the strip, that's, that just stops the action and you don't get a penalty for that. That's right. You lose a meter. That's the penalty. Right. You, lo you lose ground. Right. But if you... Go off the side of the strip in the warning area at the side. Does it? Does it? Do you lose a point then, or do you just lose that? What happens then? Do you also lose a point then? Uh, unless you are in the the last meter, then you're pushed off by losing that one meter. Otherwise, it really is of no consequence. So if you step off to the side, you don't lose a point. No, you lose a meter. You lose a meter. Right. So if you do that way down in in this, in it the just zone, forces you then a meter beyond, which then by default gives you a point. It could happen. Yeah, as I say, but it, I you see. know, no, no one's going to do that. I'm just saying. They've learned that by now. But uh, yeah, that that can happen. Got it. Yeah. And the attack continues, and uh, uh, Sophie tried to fake her out a little bit, but she didn't bite, and she finished, Corbu did, and uh, scored with the attack. Um, we're going to 25, I think? Yeah, the fifth. Yeah, we're going to 25. And uh, still got a... Uh, Which we won't make, because no. we're only at 30 right now. So yeah, yeah, nine, well, point, so. nine point advantage. So the uh, Ukrainians are keeping their gap, keeping their lead. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, in, in five rounds, they've scored 11 points. That's Yeah, I mean, the are like tough to hit, man. They're tough to hit. Five pool yeah. the, the, matches with basically the number you'd have in two. 
you know, they're, they're good down at their, uh, their own end and stuff. That was funny, man. She hit, and the blade even bent and stuff, but the, the spring-loaded point did not depress enough to, to make the light go off. Probably because it hit flat. Yep, yep. So if it hits kind of to the, if you sort of slap it and it hits along the side of it, it's not going to depress the little plunger enough to make, to break the contact and create the buzzer going off. That's correct. So the, both the foil and the epee have uh, spring-loaded points, and the saber doesn't have a point, and you hit with the, often with the side of the blade. But just mm. electrically, yep. if, you're an, if you're an electrician or an electrical engineer out there, with the foil, when you plunge it, it breaks the circuit, whereas in epe, when you plunge it, it closes the circuit. Yeah, that's exactly correct. There's two wires in the epe that go to the tip and one that go in the foil. Right, so there's three poles in each one. Uh, there's the grounding circuit uh, in the epe, and then, as you say, two wires, and if you put the point down, it, it connects them. It was attack. Um, by uh, Corbu with another point for them. And so that's how you get a touch. And then the, the, the third pole is the ground. So you, that, that, that if you hit the weapon, no, no light goes off. If you hit the ground, no light goes off. That's why we have a metallic strip here. By the way, I just wanted to mention, you were talking about going off the side. This strip is extra wide, and the, the lines that you see, uh, the perimeter lines, if you step off that, you're actually off the strip, which is something that uh -huh. isn't true on the floor out there. But since it's raised, they want to uh, give a person like a little bit of wiggle room so yeah, they don't yeah. fall off. Precisely, yeah, seen yeah. that happen. Yep. Yeah, the yeah, and uh, there is a little bit of uh, there is some flexibility in terms of the size, the width of a strip that you can create. And so sometimes you'll see more narrow strips in clubs or pieces in clubs. But we at, you know, in FIA world competition, we have the maximum amount allowed. Yeah. As it should be. And it's a different kind of, you know, if you've been used to training on a narrow strip and you go to a, one of these wide strips, it's a different experience. All of a sudden you have this lateral area you can move in that you didn't have before. And if you're fencing someone who's accustomed to that, they can use it against you. That's true. Um, you know, and it often is, is a factor lefty-righty. Like a lot of times the lefties will hug the side of the strip so you can't hit, right. hit on the outside. So they, they cover their back because they're, they're so far against the strip that you can't hit them around there. You gotta go straight into their strongest Which is terror. why lefties hate fencing lefties. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and here we see uh, Poluciuk uh, hiding the blade and finally finishing, but missing. Nice. And nice uh, Vasile there. was able to jump inside and uh, score a touch. And so we're in the sixth round here of junior women teams foil, junior women's team foil at the Junior and Cadet Fencing World Championships. And we'll be going to 30 touches if we get there. <laughs> so this is the bronze medal match. After this, we'll see the bronze match for the men, followed by the gold medal matches for women and then men. So still Got it down early. To eight touches. We're in the first of four medal rounds. And this is the last day of foil. Tomorrow we start with Epe. We'll have junior individual Epe for men and women tomorrow, followed by cadet on Saturday and team on Sunday. And that will be the finish of the World Championships. Nine full days, 18 events. Pretty amazing how they pulled it off, I have to say. Got to give the Egyptian Federation and President El Husseini a lot of credit. The Egyptians have been great. They've been wonderful. They're always wonderful hosts. Every time I've been to Cairo, they've they've really, really gone out of their way to make you feel at home and do everything they can to make it work. Here we did last touch was a real nice parry rebus by Beluzio uh, coming over the top. And looks like uh, Vasile got hit off target there on the leg, but she just rubs it out. She doesn't care. She's one, tough. One of our staff members with the FIE took a great, great photo and video flying into Cairo over the pyramids, and you mm. can see it, they flew right over them. It was a spectacular view. I, you know, such a cool place to be, and just to think that we're here. In the cradle of civilization, just a short cab ride to the to the pyramids. Yeah, 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 and just this week, I, I watched on TV, they, they transferred uh, a bunch of uh, mummies from one right. uh, older museum to the brand new one. It was, a, it, was, it was like a national event. It was a parade, yeah. yeah it was Saturday, a, it was last Saturday. Yeah. yeah. 
so that, that as you say, the cl cradle of civilization, and they, they take their uh, their role in that in the world there very seriously, and uh, you know it's very kind of almost holy to them, uh, the Egyptians. Oh, it completely is. Yeah, 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 yeah. We did a photo shoot years ago out at the pyramids. It was really fun. We had two kids basically fencing on the pyramid. <laughs> they gave us That's special cool. permission. Cool, super cool. Um, yeah, as I was going to say that, you know, they put each uh, mummy in its own hearse, and it was a big, long parade. It was amazing. 22, I think. This is the Mummies Parade, not the, for those Americans out there, the Mummers Parade, which is a different event okay. on the East Coast. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, okay, back to fencing. The repose missed like three times, and they just called halt. We're down to 105, 104, with the uh, Ukrainians holding a nine-touch lead. Is an off-target repost. The attack by Vasily was stopped with a parry, and the repost hit on her arm or somewhere like that. Vasily wants to get another touch, wants to, but she's afraid maybe, or doesn't want to put everything at risk there. Um, and the Ukrainians do a masterful job of holding that big lead. That's all they have to do. Yep. Just letting the clock run. Oh, an attack. Oh, just kind of surprised her. She, she had an attack the whole time, and boom, out she comes. So Poluziuk uh, puts it back up to 10. Got to be discouraging for the Romanians. She got it back. Yeah, counterattack of Vasile scores there. So Poluziuk. Uh, Probably be better advised just to hold her off at this point. To 10 to 17 seconds. And you know, especially with uh, younger fencers, I, I think that if you're in a situation where you're you've got a pretty you're you're up against a pretty big lead against you, uh, you know, it's a real task for a coach to keep their fencers motivated. And time's up. Absolutely right. Uh, you know, keep out there fencing and keep their energy up. Uh, you know, you have to keep going. That's the nature of this sport. So, it, you know, you hear coaches yell courage often. And, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a warrior sport. It's a combat sport. Um, and you really, really have to be daring and take risks and, and strategize and outsmart people. And, you know, it's, it's just a marvelous uh, battle of wits. And then you use your own um, your own personal uh, characteristics, like if you're fast, if you're strong, if you're tall and thin, if you're whatever it is that you your personal uh, a skill set, uh, you bring that uh, and try to make strategy and tactics uh, based on your own skill set. It's really fun to watch. So seventh round going to nine. So these are the last three rounds and. Um, uh, we are um, at 1726 Romania against Ukraine. So we're getting into the last third of this encounter between Ukraine and Romania, and we will see where it takes us. But it's looking Ooh, that quite was a nice one. hopeful for the Ukrainians. Yes, indeed, especially after that last one, uh, Dinka making a a running attack of flesh, as we say, and getting parried and running right into the point of soap it on the repo. So back to 10, 10 point deficit. Dink is forced to, to try to make something happen and the blade got intercepted, beat attack in preparation by uh, soap it, which we've seen a couple, three times from her in, in uh, all of the matches. Um, Dinka just tried to do the same thing, but uh, that there wasn't enough distance to, to get her point up to the target and she had off target. Very close together. I think Dinka needs to force the distance because she's not very tall. And Ramiz of her post to the leg. It's, it's a battle out here. Up and reprise of repose. Now they're starting to pull away even more. 29-17. There's the parry repose that was short. Oh. 
parado de postiço. Bom. Angar. Preto. Ali. Yeah, so we've got a uh, little uh, amendment to uh, uh, the question that Serge um, asked a little earlier, and that was, uh, is it possible to have a card roll over? And that's another uh, situation we mentioned, non-combativity, lasts for the whole match. So if you try to, if you try to not fence and, uh, and get a card for that. Uh, in a team event. In a team event, exactly, in this event, they, uh, it carries over, and uh, thank you very much for the clarification. Attack was short, and attack was good. Pretty hopeless at this point. So it looks like the bronze medal is going to be in the pockets of the, the uh, Ukrainians. Attack in the preparation. Because Stink has just got to make something happen, and it's not it's not happening for her. Um, you got to give her credit for trying. And uh, hope it holds her off at the point in line, and just letting the clock run, letting the clock run. And there's a nice attack. She was able to track her down, but how long did it take to do? I mean, it, you know, she it might make one touch here or there, but. In order to make up this whole deficit, it's pretty hopeless, I'd say. Yeah, looking a little grim for the uh, Romanians, but uh, still, a fourth place is nothing to sneeze at. And as you say, it puts, you know, it changes the world ranking probably, and uh, um, you know, gives them some stature. Uh, they'll be th this will be used in seeding for uh, subsequent uh, team events. Right. But to be clear, this is the juniors. It's not the uh, seniors, so it has no bearing on, for example, Olympic rank. That's correct. That's correct. But there are various uh, team events throughout the year for juniors, too. So. Right. And a lot of these juniors are very active in the senior circuit. In fact, in se several of them are, are, are uh, going to be fencing at the Olympics this summer. Brett. Absolutely. And, you know, when you were talking about the juniors got a day of rest, well, some of these teams have some cadets on there, too. So that's sort of the same thing. Yes. Same thing uh, that's actually applies true. to them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. For the for those cadets, you know, it, that's where youth plays an advantage because, you know, they had they have to fence all three days. And uh, if you're fencing all three days and you make it pretty far in the day, uh, you're going to feel it by the time you're done, that's for sure. even if you're only uh, 15 years old. It's a lot of fencing. Yep. And you can see these matches are grueling. How would you say the environment is here? I mean, we're in a we're in a hot climate here in, in Cairo. It's in, uh, you know, it's really warm outside. Uh, how, how would, would but it seems like this is this venue is ventilated pretty nicely. It's a pretty comfortable temperature Agreed. for fencing, wouldn't you say? Is, I would. I would. Yeah. It's, it, I've, I've been places where uh, it's like super hot or super cold. This is very well regulated. I, once again, give uh, you know credit to the uh, organizing committee here in Cairo and President El Husseini for really uh, thinking of everything, really. Right, we're in the indoor halls complex of the Cairo International Stadium and we're, the, the building that we're in is a large indoor stadium. It's like a mini Astrodome or Superdome uh, kind of environment uh, where we have multiple tiers of circular stands and a, and a and a big roof above us, and um, it's it's a large stadium, and it's uh, it's just uh, a little, I guess, you know, sad to see that we don't have it filled with people because of the pandemic. I, you know, but that's why this virtual audience out there is so important to us. So, once again, thank you for tuning in on the FIE Fencing Channel because um, you are our audience. Yeah, you I are mean, the spectators. I just miss like the cutouts. We should have you know cutouts of all the great fencers from the past or something in the stand. Yeah, all of them yeah. back to 1896. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember there's a, a Cuban fencer that uh, won the gold medal and was hit during the entire day just four times, named Funt. Yeah, our sport has some legends and it has a history to it. 
And it has evolved. It has evolved into, you know, it has kept with the times. And of course, you know, one of the exciting things is this summer at the Olympic Games, we will, for the first time ever, have gold medal uh, events for all 12 uh, events that we have. In the past, we've we got to 10. This is the first time we will be given all three weapons, team and individual, uh, men In and both women. Genders, right? right, exactly. Yep. And that's a remarkable accomplishment to get that. It's super exciting for, for fencing. Um, they were reluctant to give more medals than they already have for, for two cycles. And uh, I, uh, we like to give credit uh, to uh, uh, the representative of fencing, uh, uh, International Olympic Committee uh, president, uh, Thomas Bach from Germany. Um, who yes. pushed for that and uh, has finally accomplished it. Well, and the president of uh, the International uh, Fencing Federation, Mr. Alisher Uzmanov from, from Russia, ha that has been a, a, a very important initiative of his from the beginning, and he has accomplished that to his credit. And, Absolutely. You know, so we are very fortunate to have that coming up this summer. It'll be very exciting to have all those events. And Mr. Uzmanov, uh, is from Russia, and he's the uh, president of International Fencing Federation. Very, very instrumental in the success of our sport. And the survival, frankly, dur during the pandemic. He's been yes. very, very uh, supportive and, and done a lot of creative uh, uh, solutions to the problems that we've had. Right, and the Federation has been very generous uh, to, you know, uh, waive certain fees and provide certain uh, capabilities to keep it going. But you know, in addition to that, the fencers kept it going through social media. I mean, we had so much going on. We had, we had coaches giving virtual fencing classes. We've had, you know, fencers getting together and doing virtual tournaments. We've had all kinds of things to keep everybody in touch while they were essentially sitting at home riding their, uh, riding their stationary bicycles hoping for fencing to come back. But they stayed in tune with each other and you know, that's how we've been able to keep in touch. But it's very interesting, one, the, other, the other night, one of the gold medals was saying that, you know, she, this tournament was the first, she got a gold medal in, was the first competition she'd been in in a year. Yeah, I mean, that's right. And you know, you got to give a lot of, uh, we like to call out the fencing family. Um, got to give a lot of credit to a lot of people who, you know, it's a, it's a competitive sport and everybody thinks that, you know, they've got the secret and they're going to win because they do that. Well, during this pandemic, the generosity and the sharing had come out and it, it really showed like a family, like people, people didn't want another club to fail or to go bankrupt right. or whatever. And they've been sharing and, and, and supporting and stuff. So uh, the pandemic has been a horrible situation for everyone, but it also has brought out some amazing characteristics and positive. Sure. And creativity. Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, innovation. How, how you know you give uh, you give uh, a Zoom classes for uh, for yeah. three times a week for for a year? You got to be pretty creative to keep people interested, right. and they have been. We're we are a big family, and we've always known that, and it's paid off. And right now we're 40 seconds away from the end of the eighth round of nine. Ukraine leading 36 to 24 for the bronze medal in women's. Junior team foil. That's 37 with a nice remise on the right. And uh, essentially, this segment is supposed to go to 40, and we might get there. But at this point, I don't think that's a big objective for Bidenko. Not at all. Bidenko. No, 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 no. But I think it's, uh, you got to give uh, the Rema Romanian team a lot of credit for, for keeping up the effort. You know, they're, they're not giving up. They're, you know, right. Vasile here, look at those lunges. Look at the effort. I mean, that's really, really valiant. And it, uh, it just goes to show you, you know, the, the, um, the yeah. ethos of, uh, yes. of, of the effort and stuff and, and the sport that we are. Valiant, that's a good word. Valiant is a great word, really. There See, she, by golly, got another touch. Oh look at her strut back and forth. There you go, she's proud. I like it. Yeah, I think it's gonna be ruled a remise off target from the right, um, but still, you know, Vasilis not giving up. She's making every effort to put on a single light. 
And there she goes again, off target. As you point out, these are they're young teenagers, you know, and they're showing their, their training is when they get to be seniors and make that Olympic team. They're going to have all that that uh, battle-tested, uh, you know, determination and stuff. Right, and, yeah. and the ability to to stay under control under pressure or when the chips are down. Right. I agree, and they have it under control. You don't see any crazy, vicious stuff with anything. They're just, you know, valiantly, as you say. Uh, you actually used the word. I just said it was a good word. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. But, uh, yeah. I just uh, am so impressed with uh, all of these fencers. Here's our... So we're in the final round. Plozyuk versus Korbu. Ukraine versus Romania. Three minutes. Whoever is in the lead at the end of this or hits 45 wins and gets a bronze medal. And now Corbu's asking for a review. Uh, Did uh, I think she was just so let's see put the head in the in the way? Yeah, yeah, I don't think she asked for video. That's true, no. you're right. She just asked, please watch for she that. She was making a a statement. Yep. You got to make the signal with your fingers, the square, in order to ask right. for a, a video review. Right. <laughs> Look, very close to the leg. That remains the repose didn't quite get there. The big tall girl outreaches her. These impressive young women, I must say. And we'll close out in four. Opposition counterattack. And he's looking at the replay. I don't know really what he's looking for, but the fencers are going back to their own guard lines. He's trying to find out if there's some violation. Up oh, yeah, there was yellow card for the Ukrainian for some violation, probably covering the target or like obscuring the target with the head or. And the reprise of attack by Corbu hits. Look at her. She's. Uh, She's 28 39, 11 touch deficit with only just under two minutes to try to tie or surpass uh, the Ukraine. Looks unlikely. You know, I, you know, I think there's a little bit of a, there's something psychological about hitting 40. <laughs> yep, that's true. Both in life and in fencing. I was just going to say, man, it's, <laughs> it's in the rear view mirror for me, but. <laughs> and there's 40. There you go. You said it. Nice long, long attack by Polusio. And stop it. And Corbu wants to find out if uh, if uh, Polotsu put the uh, head in the way again. And no. Referee just gives the uh, counterattack with opposition in favor of the Ukrainian team. And the parry reef, I mean, the attack hit off target. Change weapons. She mangled it pretty well, so 
Uh, she's going to give it up there for in favor of a of a different blade. She prefers all these. Uh, all these blades in these matches have been put through technical inspection, so there's no interruption with uh, inspecting each one when they're changed. They're all ready to go and approved. There's quite a bit of infrastructure to these tournaments um, and a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes that no one sees, but that was a good attack again. And there's a pair of repos that misses and a remise, 29. I think there's, there's a select psychological happiness to getting 32. Yes. Uh, post off target. And we, here we have that kind of acrobatic, uh, leaving the foot on the end of the strip and, and leaning backwards to try to use distance to avoid. And there's a beautiful finish to the flank, which is kind of the ribs. And uh, another, another point for the Ukraine. And a finish again for the Ukraine, but this time on top. And only one touch to go. And they will look, reach 45, it looks like to me. And there, there it, is. it is. An attack from the left is parried. A repost is good. 45-29. Bronze medal to the Ukraine Junior Women's Foil Team. World so, Championship. Yeah, bronze medal at the World Championships. All of those girls on that team will go home with a medal. And now we will be moving on. Next up will be the Men's Junior Team Foil Competition for the bronze medal. And we'll be back in just a few minutes for their introduction and the start of the action. So stay with us here on the FIE Fencing Channel at the Junior and Cadet Fencing World Championships live from Cairo, Egypt. Thanks for being here. We appreciate our virtual spectators and audience. We'll be right back.